Welcome to Decker Tech. I'm Aaron Decker, and today we're going to go across the doing some across the obelisk starting decks for specifically Maluka. Uh, I am here on Madness 16 with Poverty enabled, so I am showing you the the kind of the the weakest form of the deck. Hopefully, you have more shards and gold available to this. I didn't take any of the divinations, but we'll kind of talk about what divinations you would take and cards you would be looking for in them. So with Maluka, she is all about uh, dark. She is the the healer class that cares about dark charges. Uh, as we level up her level her up, she's going to apply more dark. She's going to do it when she does damage, and there's just a lot of synergy around her doing attacks that deal damage, and they apply dark. And her passive says every time she applies a a dark charge, she heals the lowest hit point character for that amount. So. The whole idea is that she heals through dark charges. I said dark a lot because that's what Maluka wants. That's the only thing you really care about. Uh, and so the, the most efficient form of dark in the game right now is really just Unholy Storm. So you could just, the only th if the only thing you take from this video is play Unholy Storm on Maluka, then you've probably succeeded, right? That's, that's what we're going to try to do with her. So we've taken out uh, anything that like the there's the the shadow men's we don't need those they they apply dark and they're weird healing but we want to do damage with our spells we want all our spells to be attacks that de deal damage because later on we're going to have procs that trigger off that uh that damage form so unholy storm we're actually looking to upgrade it we want eventually the six cost upgrade because we repeat one because then that's eight instances of damage it's a lot of dark and as we equip more items to her and level her up those dark charges are going to be more and more, and you'll be able to get multiple explosions from one cast of Unholy Storm. And if you pay attention to dark here, it's all about when it explodes, it does two shadow damage per charge. And now most of her damage is through the dark explosions, not the direct damage of the shadow spells, because you're not able to stack dark, uh, dark and lower the resistances of your enemies. So this is all about the explosion damage, which is not affected by her stats. So it's only affected by how many dark charges there were. So it's very important that, like, powerful is nice on her, but we don't need it like we do other DPS characters. Uh, and remember, she is also healing, so... Um, and the healing isn't based on her damage. The healing is based on the dark. So uh, I've said it a million times, and I'm going to say it more. Dark charges. That's all we really care about on Maluka, right? Um, so powerful is nice. Don't really need it. Uh, bless is okay but don't really need it it's all about how can we stack more charges on our our monsters so you can only craft one on holy storm at my level uh lower levels you can craft multiples i would craft multiples if you can if you can upgrade them go to six cost if you have any free upgrades from like the hatch from cornelius or if you have wilbur he can fix monuments and get free upgrades uh you're gonna want some some six cost no holy storms there's an argument for some four costs early on but if you can make it to the six cost, go for the six cost. The they have at max perks, they have the same rate of dark charges, but once you start getting items and levels, the six is more valuable. So if you want, you can start at the four, and eventually work up to the six later towns. But it, just just plan on trying to get to the six cost as often as possible. So to do that, we're gonna need fanaticism. Uh, it would be perfectly fine if we we set all our cards to vanish except for two fanat uh, three fanaticism and two unholy storms at six. That could be her deck, and that would be a great deck for Maluka. Uh, it, it might have some inconsistencies against bosses, but it would be a really fun and really enjoyable deck to play. Uh, we also took out uh, some of the expensive stuff. I left one Vitalize in here to talk about it. Uh, ideally, you'd want to replace this with a Black Karma that vanishes. Um, let's talk about the Black Karmas, I guess. This is the most efficient uh, Shadow Spell. She starts with three of it, and you can craft two more. Uh, you'll be looking for the Vanish version for the most part, unless you need more cards in your hand, depending on how much Inspire or what your, your hand size is on an average turn. So if your average turn is 5, and you, you'll just you know fill in a couple yellow Karmas to make it so you have 5 cards every turn, and then anything else in your deck, you just want these blue-black blue Karmas, unless you have something better, like you know Meditates and stuff like that. So... Keeping all the Black Karmas, we want to upgrade them if we had the shards to do so, but they cost 90 apiece to upgrade, so uh, for my starting deck, I'm not going to do that on High Madness, but you'll want to upgrade these uh, accordingly. Dispel Magic, uh, someone on your team needs it. Maluka's a good one to do it since she starts with it. I'd upgrade to the Dispel 3 version. 
if I had the shards. And uh, you don't always need it. You can sometimes take it out depending on how many healers you're running. I've done a four healer run, and I'd take the Dispel Magic off Maluka in that case because Otis is going to be... Otis and Nesglick are, are more suited for the Dispel Magics. Uh, Vitalize is another route you can go with Maluka. You can go either the, the Dark version or the Healing version. The Healing version revolves around regen and healing spells. Uh, and Vitalize is actually a really good healing spell for her because it's got the, the two vitality, the, the five regen. Like, she also gets a lot of vitality synergy. So even though Vitalize is a, is a rough card to look at and be like, man, that's so expensive for a little value, you have to remember that regen is ticks per turn and vitality is, is five healing per stack. So if you even just get one extra vitality charge, there's an extra five healing for this. And this is healing that goes, it goes past decay, uh, it's unaffected by any of the uh, corruptors on higher madness difficulties. Uh, yes, there's some act force uh, issues with some of the enemies being able to mo uh, to remove it, but this is just a solid heal that gets around most most of the things that are detriments to healing. Vitality doesn't care about right. So, Vitalize is a, is a very good card if you're going the the healer version of Maluka. But remember. The dark version of Maluka is also a healer, so we're just going to go the dark version, right? But once you've played Maluka on the dark side a couple times, I'd recommend going and try the healing version. And if you do, you're going to want to keep all these vitalizes in and kind of play around vitality, regeneration, and that sort of stuff. Uh, but back to the dark version of her. So Inner Fire we don't need. I have it here because Inner Fire, Detoxify, and Clarity are all zero-cost vanishing and or pseudo-vanishing cards that we want to fill our deck with so that we can get to our final hand size of cast and holy storm as much as possible. So inner fire is nice because it it immediately is drawing past itself, uh, but we don't really need the powerful and it hurts us a little. They're hurting us a little. You can get around it, but um, the it's it's one option to go. It, Detoxify is another one just because the zero cost vanish that does things, especially in Act One. The dispel bleed is a big deal. And if you're going green biome first, the Dispel Poison is a big deal. And then Clarity just kind of pseudo replaces itself. And in Act 1, dealing with insane stacks and slow is a... Right, mainly the insane is pretty good. So being able to dispel the, the, the insane on any of your damage dealers is good. But like I said, these three are just filler cards. If you can afford it, Black Karmas are better. And I'd just go with the, the Vanishing Black Karmas. Um... Otherwise, these are very viable filler cards. Me, I normally go... Uh, I'll probably have some sort of card I, I divinationed out, and I'll go to Detoxify if I feel we need a little more uh, survivability in Act 1, or I'll go to Inner Fires if I just need more DPS kind of thing. Or, I mean, I, I love Clarities. If I'm not the main healer, I'll do Clarities, and I'll just dump them into, like, the Reginald or whatever that needs the extra Inspire. So, Bad Auguries, this is a card that... If you can play on Holy Storm, play on Holy Storm. Like, but eventually you're gonna run out of energy, and you need you need to fill your hand with cards that do something. And this is a zero cost damage attack. That it's in the right colors. It's the shadow spell, right? So we are kind of the the shadow healer. But mainly it's just that it's a zero cost attack. That's that's the important thing about it. That's why we haven't cut it. Um, you just want attack cards. I'd rather have Black Karma if I can afford the energy for it, but depending on how many fanaticisms or if you have a battery mage, that kind of stuff, you might not be able to afford to do something bigger than a, a bad augury, which it's a really poor card, but sometimes you just need a filler card, right? So what have we not talked about card-wise? Malediction, fantastic. Play it first. <laughs> That's just the hardest thing to remember is if it's in your hand, pop the Malediction. Uh, you got to remember that it's 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 dark and it's vulnerable, so you're putting it on either the target you're planning on killing that turn or the target that is easier to to pop. Uh, that's what I refer to exploding the dark charges as. So if you hear me say that, that's what I'm referring to. Uh, and then healing rains, just a strong valuable card. It works in both the healing version and the DPS version, especially with, with one of her talents, which we'll look at now. Uh, so let's go to Maluka. Of these two rituals, I don't want to get too much into it, but basically, if in doubt, go with Yang Ritual and use a Healing Rain to activate it. You can always cut these or work in a Yin Ritual, but you'll find that the... Uh, so Yin gives you healing for doing dark, 
Yang gives you dark for doing healing. Um, and the you find you want more damage, right? And you're going to run... Healing Reigns are just a good card all around. So Yang just kind of weaponizes your healing rain. But the big one here is Jinx. When dealing damage with a hit, apply two dark. So this is why we want attacks that deal damage. We want the... the we we want those bad auguries kind of stuff if we have to because we're just trying to stack dark on our opponent healing brew is if you're going the the other version like i said it's kind of cool because you can reduce the cost of your healing spells and grant regen uh but we're talking about the dark one in this case uh vaccine and love enhancer just pick your favorite of the two uh, they both have their unique uh, uses honestly i often don't run either a ritual or an enhancer here I just, I'll delete them from my deck after I use them. Uh, and then last one here is Shadow Form, plus one Dark Charges. And the 30% more damage, remember, that 30% more damage doesn't actually affect the, the popping of the Dark, only the initial application of Shadow Damage. Uh, this that, that part will maybe affect you if you go like Vile Gas, which we'll, I'll look at here, but it's the Jinx plus the Shadow Form that just says, my Unholy Storms will pop multiple times. And it is fantastic and fun to watch. A uh, couple equipment and cards here. Starting equipment, the only really things that you want to look for is I bet he's a good one early on because it's just a, it's just another attack. We're just looking for attacks. Um, you don't really need it until you have Jinx, so um, it's not a big deal. There's not really a shadow pet at the moment. Uh, and weapons, her biggest thing is is in the weapon slot. You're gonna want the anything that has plus dark charges or on hit deal dark because that's that's all you're doing. Uh, this Ragged Doll, you'll, if you're working with teammates, just kind of remember that the, whichever one has the, the Dark Stacks early on is going to be the only one you can really pop on turn one. Uh, so just you kind of have to prioritize your target based on who has stacks that you can pop in a turn. So it's all about working around your, your Dark Charges. I said it again. I said it again because it's important. Um, and then, of course, looking at the Dark Cards... There's one we haven't really mentioned. Dark Outbreak's a pretty decent one. Uh, it doesn't scale well on single target, but it's just it's a fun little bouncy ball of, of dark charges. Uh, and then the only other one of real note is Vile Gas. This one is a good filler for if you are running poison on anyone. I wouldn't really recommend keeping Vile Lances, even if you're running Vile Gas. They're just not effective, like value-wise, for energy to application. But if you have someone else on your team applying poison, Vile Gas is a good detonator to do a large amount of damage. And if you are running Vile Gas, I would recommend running Inner Fires. Because in that case, the powerful does matter. Because you are doing a large amount of shadow damage. Anyway, I talked about her a little longer than I meant to. And I said the word dark probably more times than I needed to. But I don't know. It's, it's, it's all about just dark. Black Karma is your best single target card. Unholy Storm is just your best card in general. Like I said, if her deck was just two Unholy Storms and three Fanaticisms that are upgraded to the the, the three energy version, I would run that, and that would be that would be wonderful. Anyway, catch you later. Peace.